A legendary lich with nefarious plans. Dead gods and risen deities. Jungles and dinosaurs. A curse that unifies all. Tomb of Annihilation is a campaign that sees you traverse through the dense jungles of Cholt. Here, we will briefly explore the story that occurs in the Tomb of Annihilation and discover its secrets. A death curse has swept the lands. The bodies of those who have been raised from the dead begin to waste away, inching closer to death with each passing day. The miracle of raising the dead no longer exists. That is the death curse. Your adventure begins with you meeting a masked and robed figure. She introduces herself as Sindra Sylvain. Sindra was once an adventurer, but now she is retired. As adventurers do, she was resurrected from death during her glory days. Struck with the death curse, her body slowly wastes away. Sindra asks you to help save the people of the realm by eliminating the death curse. Her contacts in the Harpers tell Sindra that the cause of the death curse is an artifact called the Soulmonger. Rumors have it that the object can be found in the peninsula of Cholt. You agree to Sindra's task, and she teleports the both of you away to the port of Nyanzaru. Once arriving at the port, you notice the climate to be very tropic. A beating sun overhead, and jungle surrounding the city. The biome of this region seems very taxing on adventurers. Sindra hands you an incomplete map of Cholt and wishes you luck. She travels off to stay with an old friend, where she rests as you begin your quest. Exploring the city, you find it to be a bustling town of trade and traditions. Dinosaurs and exotic creatures can be spotted throughout the area. In desperate need for information, you set forth into the town, find yourself a guide, and head deep into the surrounding jungle to map out the land. As you explore the land of Cholt, you encounter many locations of significance that you denote on your map. The land is vast, and you are bound to make many allies as you make enemies. Through your journey of the jungle, you learn of clues that lead you to the hidden city of Omu. Perhaps something here will bring you closer to finding the Soulmonger. Hidden in the southern region of Cholt is the city of Omu. While exploring the city of Omu, you meet an injured man named Orvex Okramas. He was initially a part of an expedition team conducted by the Red Wizards of Tei. As thanks for your aid, Orvex tells you that the Red Wizards suspect the Soulmonger lays within the Tomb of the Nine Gods. The only way to enter the tomb is to recover nine puzzle cubes from each shrine of their respective god. Unfortunately, the Red Wizards have already started searching for these puzzle cubes. Time is now of the essence. You rush to each of the shrines, completing their challenges and gathering a few of the puzzle cubes. Along the way, you encounter the Red Wizards who have been collecting the cubes as well. Their leader is a lich who, due to the death curse, is liable to death. In order to free him from the binds of the curse, they must put an end to the Soulmonger. Forming a tentative alliance with the organization, you find that there is only eight puzzle cubes among the both of you. The Red Wizards inform you that they have been attacked by members of the Yuan-T, and they must have the final puzzle cube. If you are able to infiltrate the lair and regain the last puzzle cube, you and the Red Wizards may make it into the Tomb of the Nine Gods. Entering the Fane of the Night Serpent, you rush into the temple and battle through hordes of Yuan-T. Once reaching the throne room, you come face to face with Ras Nasi. As the leader of the Yuan-T, Ras Nasi looks significantly stronger than the Yuan-Ts you face, but it is obvious that he is in a weakened state. He asks you why you have infiltrated his temple, and you explain to him that you've come for the final puzzle cube of the Nine Gods. Each second spent is time wasted, and you must enter the Tomb of the Nine Gods to stop the Death Curse. Ras Nasi is intrigued as he too has been affected by the curse and wishes for you to complete your quest. He hands over the final cube and directs you to the tomb's entrance. Approaching the tomb of the nine gods, you search around the area and find a hidden entrance into the tomb. Using the nine puzzle cubes that you've collected, you unlock the door and take your first steps into the dangerous dungeon. You traverse through the hallways and rooms, descending further into the dark crypt. Solving puzzles, gathering skeleton keys, and fighting monsters, you eventually gain the knowledge that this tomb was created by an evil lich named Aserarak. The nine gods of Omu were not true divine beings, but were instead trickster spirits that fooled the people of Omu into worshipping them. Aserarak had killed the false gods and imprisoned their spirits inside the tomb of the nine gods. Additionally, you find a journal belonging to a once diligent scribe. 
It denotes that on one of Asirarak's journey, he had stumbled upon an Atropal, a dead god. With the help of the Sown Sisters, he managed to create the Soulmonger, a device that could reap the souls of the dying and feed it to the Atropal. Asirarak then abandoned his tomb to watch the rise of the Death God from afar. Once reaching the sixth level of the tomb, you encounter a room with a skeleton gate locked with five golden symbols in a row. Along with the skeleton gate, there are five doors lining the walls of the room. Each door represents a trial, and completing every trial allows you access to unlocking the skeleton door. As you insert each of the five skeleton keys that you've collected throughout the tomb, you find three night hags that appear and attack you. These must be the Sown Sisters. You have a swift battle in which two of the three night hags die. The third night hag bargains for her life by forming a contract with you. At the cost of allowing her to live, she gives you information of the dangers ahead. The only way to leave this dungeon is through the Ebon Pool. Charred bones point the way. Keeping these tips in mind, you continue through the skeleton gate to find a large room open over a vat of lava. In the center of the room is a crystal cylinder. Attached to the cylinder is an abomination of a creature. You can only assume that the container is the Soulmonger, and the creature must be the Atropal. Striking at the cylinder in an attempt to free the contained souls, you incur the wrath of the Atropal. A battle strikes out. The Atropal flies around the room, attacking you with spells and tendrils. You slay the creature, and watch as it tumbles and falls into the lava. The death of the Atropal gives you relief, however, this is no time for celebration. A Asirarak himself appears before you, and attacks you with all of his power. The trickster gods within the tomb notices his arrival, and infuses you with their power to fight the evil lich. Greatly wounding Asirarak, he casts teleportation on himself in an attempt to flee. He exclaims that you will meet him once again, and on that day, your death shall come. You hastily scramble to the Soulmonger, and smash the struts keeping it upright. The container smashes into the lava, releasing all the souls that are trapped within it. Taking the Night Hag's advice, you make your way to a mist gate in the balcony of the room. From here, you follow the charred skeletons, and enter the Ebon Pool. An obelisk rises from the pool, emanating a magical aura. Touching the obelisk, you suddenly vanish from the Ebon Pool. Standing before you is the familiar entrance of the Tomb of the Nine Gods. Freed of the horrible crypt, you embark on your journey back to Port Nanzaru, having destroyed the Soulmonger and saving the realm. Hello everybody! If you guys enjoyed the story of the Tomb of Annihilation, please subscribe and give me a like. Would really help me out. Thanks!